Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. So we've got a question about a water maker. Shannon asks, this year we managed to get out on our 47 pilot house. It's a 47 foot pilot house, so about maybe 15 meters. We are semi-retired and stayed out for most of July and August. Sounds awesome. We noticed that many marinas had water restrictions and we were limited to the amount we could fill up our freshwater tanks. Uh, even when we stop for diesel. Well, we would like to install the water maker, but don't know where to start. Any advice? All right, water maker. I installed the water maker on my boat this year, so good timing. Okay, so water makers. Um, water makers, there's a lot of variables to consider. Uh, one of the most important ones are gonna be um, besides space, and by the way, space is an issue. So let's not pretend that a water makers, well there is, but they're not like this small, like they can be this big. And they can be modular, but still installing a water maker is not a trivial thing. There's rarely a place on our boats when there's like a huge swath of unused area that's just ready to be dropped a water maker in place. Certainly easier to do when we're commissioning a boat from scratch or at the beginning, but most of us don't have like just this endless real estate in a locker somewhere or in a lazarette or in the engine room where we have endless space. So the first thing to consider is where the hell are we going to mount that water maker? So you're going to have to be a little bit crafty there and you're going to have to think there are two choices generally is either you can buy a frame unit which makes the install easier or you can buy a modular unit which is broken up in different pieces and you have to interconnect those pieces somewhere throughout the boat, right? So for example, on my boat, I have a sailboat and so guess, of course, I don't have a huge space so my choice was a modular one and the water maker on my boat is literally installed in multiple little cavities to make use of all the available space that I have on my boat. So first thing is going to be framed or modular. So keep that in the back of your mind. The next uh, question to kind of think about is, do you have an AC generator in your boat? I.e. can you create alternating current and generally you're not going to do this via an inverter. Do you want, do you have a generator on your boat? And if you do, then you should consider an AC powered water maker. Most water makers on most boats are AC powered. Of course, there's an exception. Uh, we commonly deploy Spectra and they can be DC powered. Like on my boat, I went with Spectra because I don't have a generator. And so my decision doesn't apply to everyone here, right? It's just, this made sense on my boat. I needed a modular water maker and I needed DC powered water maker. So my choices were narrowed down and I went with Spectra. Now, if you have a generator on board your boat and a 47 foot boat is likely gonna have a generator, then you would consider an AC powered generator. And the reason why you would consider that is because a generator, that gener not a generator, a water maker that's powered by a generator can give you higher output in terms of gallons per day. So most water makers are gonna actually look at if you ran that water maker, and this is theoretical of course, for 24 hours, how many gallons per day would you have? Are you gonna have, for example, 600 gallons per day, 900 gallons per day, 1200? And I know it sounds extreme and it's, what I always do is bring it back, divide by 24 and say, okay, well, if you're gonna run your water maker for three hours, how much water are you gonna do? Or how much water are you gonna make in an hour? And then you can start extrapolating your head. Okay, well, I could tolerate running my generator for three hours to make water. So that's something to factor. The other one is also the size of your tanks. There's no point in having a water maker that is so huge where your tank is so tiny because the water maker is gonna fill it up in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And then it's probably not gonna make a lot of sense. But there is a sweet spot, by the way, and a lot of times the smaller water makers are not a lot less money, you would think it is, but they're not. So make sure you look at the, a wide range. You might be, like a lot of our clients, really focus on cost, but for a couple, ex like I'm talking in 10% more incremental cost, you might be looking at a water maker that is 50% more output than the other one you're looking at. So sometimes the reason why we sell smaller water makers is not because the client is doing it from a cost perspective, they're doing it from a space perspective. That's the only space they can fit that water maker. So you're not gonna have as much cost savings as you might think by going with a small water maker especially if it's AC powered. So take that into consideration. 
The other thing too to think about when you're doing a water maker, beyond service of course, and having available spare parts, is also um, if you're gonna have a remote panel. Because a water maker generally is not installed in a convenient location, right, to you. It might be convenient for the water, but not for actually operating the device. And so consider what kind of remote panel you're gonna have. And then the other layer to that is, well, how much automation do you wanna have on your water maker? Some of us are geeky. Some of us don't mind actually having a water maker that involves a lot more of us. And it's a trade-off, right? The more you do on a water maker and you're skilled, the less likely you're gonna have problems because you're the ones figuring them out, right? You're doing it on your own. And the other end of the spectrum is fully automatic, fully everything, and it's convenient. You can, you know, like on my boat, I went for the fully automatic because sometimes when the water maker is running, I might not be on board or I might not wanna pay attention to it. So I'll send my water maker and I can say, okay, I want you to fill the tank or I want you to run for an hour or I want you to make, let's say 30 gallons. So I can literally set three different objectives. Well, I mean, you choose one, but I have a choice of three, like fill the tank, do X amount of water or run for X amount of time. So that gives me convenience and the machine does it on its own because I went with a fully automatic model. Now, of course, that's gonna increase the price. So as a boater, what you're doing is you're trading off. Are you saying, I wanna save costs, be more part of the process, probably a lot more reliable to be part of the process because humans, if you do it well, you're gonna be good at it. But if you also, like myself, I was like, you know what? I can't spend that much time. I'm already working on other systems on my boat. And so this is one that I want abstraction. And so I went with automatic. Um, there's different features from different water makers. Uh, some, some offer different, and I don't wanna get in the pros and cons of each one, but there are features that are offered by some brands and not others. So you might wanna read a little bit into the details. And then lastly, ask around. Um, you know, it pays to ask boaters, what are they doing? Your neighbors, um, boaters that you trust, what have they done? Why did they make that decision? Because understanding why they did something enables all of us to make a better decision for our own boats. So great question and thanks for asking. I want to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to get more of this cool content. And also check out our website. If you've got questions that are unanswered, we've actually taken the time to answer quite a few questions and you might be surprised to find the answer right there on our website. So thanks again.